Hi everyone, Fintan here from Danzen. Google have launched their new Google Meet interface. Now, we have it on our domain. Depending on when you're watching this, you may not have the new interface yet, but I thought it might be a good time to do a quick overview of the Google Meet uh, interface itself uh, and the new experience, which is more immersive, inclusive, uh, and intuitive, hopefully, uh, for end users. So if you'd like to see a demonstration of that, you know what to do, stay tuned. Okay, so um, those of you who uh, are keeping up to date with these things, you may have read Google's blog post in April on their new Google Meet experience. And you can see here, it's designed to make meetings more immersive, inclusive, and productive. And you can see that they're uh, planning on rolling out, again, this isn't necessarily rolled out to everybody yet, a new richer interface. Uh, we've been using it for the last couple of weeks um, in our team meetings, and it's definitely much easier uh, to engage with people, to reposition cameras. And um, there's some really, really interesting uh, features that are just gonna make it much easier for people to uh, engage over video call. So when we have a look at some of these things, you're gonna be able to pin your own um, view so you, you can actually move it around before it used to be kind of locked. Um, you can actually make yourself a tile, which you could do before, or you can make yourself uh, a smaller version or a small tile down at the bottom. Um, it will also sort of resize depending on what's happening. So in terms of different speakers, so if there's a lot of people in a room, it's gonna expand that view. So in, in this example here, there's sort of four people in a room, so it's, it's moving that out. Um, and it's also going to do things like adjust the lighting um, to make it, you know, if there's like maybe a lot of uh, light coming from, from behind, which happens to a lot of people. I know that happens to me with light coming in here sometimes when the sun comes overhead. Uh, auto zooming as well. So if you're off to the side, it's going to uh, center you and zoom in, which is great. And um, so some really, really great tools and then some other ones around background as well. So I'm just going to go over the whole interface now. So um, I've got my Google Meet open um, and I'm on my meet.google.com page and I've got a, a, a team meeting that I've set up. So I'm gonna drop into this now. I can see that uh, nobody else is here. Now it's defaulting to my camera. I'm gonna change it to my FaceTime camera so that you guys can see me on there. And we'll angle that up slightly. There we go. Uh, as you know from our other videos, you can now uh, check your audio as well before you actually log in. So I was able to change the actual settings there of um, the particular uh, Google Meet that I'm in. I can change my video or my audio so I can, I can adjust those if I want to. Um, and I can change my background as well, which is quite useful because you can, uh, I, I, I quite like just the, the semi-blurred background. Um, but there is also the ability to add images now, which I'm going to go through. So, Okay, so I'm in my Google Meet now, and we can see that already the interface looks um, very, very different. So we can see on here, um, I'm actually going to uh, just move that up slightly. We can see on here now, I've got all of my kind of um, quick access things, stuff that I would kind of need uh, on a regular basis down at the bottom, so I can mute myself. I can turn my camera on and off. Um, I can raise my hand, the little hand raise, uh, which allows you to uh, raise your hand. Um, I can screen share it if I want. I can screen share my entire screen, just a window. So this is just a window here in, in, um, in Google uh, Chrome, or just a tab. That's the best for video. So um, if you want to uh, share a tab and you want to maybe play a video over the actual call, that's what you would do. Uh, and then this is your more kind of detailed settings. So you've got cast the meeting. So I could cast the meeting uh, to some other uh, location. So we've got a lot of Google Homes, as you can see. I could cast it to my kitchen display. I could cast it to my Chromecast in my, um, in my sitting room. And these are only audio ones, but I could cast the audio to those as well. We have a whiteboard. This will actually create a Jamboard um, from within here. Now I'm going to show you the quick settings to, to get to that in a minute. Um, I can also record the meeting as well if I wanted to. Uh, I could change the layout. Now I tend to use, leave it on auto and just sort of let Google um, decide the layout because that I find that works best for me. But some people may want to select tiled or spotlight depending on the type of meeting that they're having. 
or they may want to decide the number of tiles that they see. So I sort of leave mine on 30, but again, you can put it right up to, to 49 if you want. So it really depends, you know, on the types of meetings that you have um, within your business. I can full screen it. I can change my background. I can turn captioning on or off. And you can now select captioning in different languages as well, which is great. So I can pick French here um, and Google will uh, turn on French captioning. Yeah. Je m'appelle Fintan. I'm going to refer it to work. Okay, interesting. Okay, so it doesn't have the translation yet. Uh, so if I put it into English, then it's going to basically say everything or type everything that I'm saying, which is pretty cool. So that's the captioning. Um, you can use audio. So that's if maybe you're on a poor connection, you want to dial out to your phone. Um, which is good, or you can have a dial in and you can you can call in on your phone or you can have the, the system call you, which is great now. Also useful if you want to dial somebody else into a meeting. We had a, another um, video on this as well. It's a great little feature. Uh, I'm going to turn off captioning, I think, while we're going through that. Uh, report a problem, report abuse, the troubleshooting. Again, we covered this in another video. I found this quite useful because I often get customers saying, oh, I find that my Zoom calls are better than Google Meet or vice versa. This is a great way to check that at the time of your call, is there actually some issue? You know, is there some system load or some, um, some connection difficulty that you didn't know about? Uh, and often that's, that's what the case is. Do you know what I mean? So I found this very helpful the other day when I was having some issues. I was able to go in here and check and actually realize that I ha was having a connection problem and I was able to correct it. So that was great in the middle of the meeting. Um, and then the settings, uh, this goes into the more detailed settings where you can change your microphone, uh, you can change your speaker where it's actually kind of coming from, you can test it out. Also, you've got noise cancellation. The noise cancellation is absolutely awesome. Uh, we use this quite a lot. And I was actually in a meeting today with Charlotte and there was uh, a jackhammer outside as people working on, on roadworks and we couldn't hear it at all. And she, she was apologizing for the, the noise and we said, actually, we can't hear it at all. Um, so it's really, really impressive, the, uh, the noise cancellation. You've got your camera, so I could select my different cameras in here. Um, your resolution, this is actually uh, quite an important one because this determines the amount of bandwidth that you're taking up in terms of sending and receiving resolution. So you've got your sending resolution and your receiving resolution. I tend to just leave it on auto, but you can actually bring it down to standard on both. Um, and that just means that if you're in a low quality, you can see it's kind of zoomed in now on me. And if you've got a, a low quality connection, uh, it's a very good, very good idea. So you see if I go back and I bring it up to auto, which is going to bring it up to 720p, we can see it's zoomed back out now and you can see more of the of the room. OK, uh, and then the last one is host controls. Now, not everybody will have host controls. Depends, obviously, if you're the host of the the uh, meeting. Also, there's only attendance tracking in here, which is quite useful. It will actually send you a little report of when someone enter the meeting and exit the meeting, the, the different people. Useful if you've got a large group. Um, in Google for Education, there is, um, or Google Workspace for Education, there is more host controls. And definitely we're expecting some of those to kind of come uh, to the Google Meet uh, business uh, eventually. So looking forward to that. Now over here on the right hand side, there's some interesting things. So I've got my little information uh, one and the information one allows me to see the details of the actual meeting itself. And I can copy those details and send them to somebody else if I want. But it also allows me to see the attachments and I can click on these and it will actually bring me to that specific attachment, which is great. It's a really uh, quick, handy feature. I don't have to go back to my calendar appointment. I can see the list of people that are in the actual call. I can add other people to the call again by inviting them or indeed by dialing them into the call. Uh, that feature that we we're talking about earlier on. I can uh, have a little chat with everybody in the call. What's interesting here is the Google actually state now that the messages will only be seen by people in the call and they're deleted when the call ends. And that's something that customers often um, forget about uh, and they close out of it and they don't save the link um, maybe that they, that they had. And then this last area is the kind of activities. And I really like this because um, Google have improved this now and brought all of it together. So before I used to have to go into settings and find whiteboards. Now I have whiteboarding in here so I can start a new whiteboard and it will immediately create a Jamboard for me, which is what it's doing right now. 
uh, and yeah, I'm gonna send that to the team. So that's the the people that I've cr I've um, added to that appointment, and it's actually created a little Jamboard here for me, so we could work away on that Jamboard together. Um, I've also got record, so I could immediately start recording the meeting if I wanted to as well. And we have Q and A, so you can allow Q and A, and then people can ask questions. How do we use Google Meet? And you can post it, and then people can like it. You can you can um, hide it, or you can say whether you've responded to it or not, which is quite useful again for you know maybe doing training or, or things like that. I keep looking down at this camera and I actually have the other one there. Um, then we've got polls as well. So you can start a poll from within here. Uh, how great is Google Meet? Uh, okay. Awesome. I love Zoom. Some people do. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then you can decide whether you want to show the results to everybody. You can launch your your uh, poll, and then people can vote. Obviously, I don't have I don't have anybody in here to uh, to vote, um, but people can can vote on the poll, um, and then you can end the poll and sort of see the re the results and share them with everyone as well. But it's just great that all of those things are are in the same place now. And then the last one's breakout rooms, where you can sort of divide people up um, into different uh, uh, different calls. So I can have. Charlotte in this one, I could have my, myself and the other one, so you could you know, break it up if you're doing, again, if you're doing a training session, um, and you can open up the rooms, and then it will divide people out into the other meeting rooms. So if I do that, it's gonna break me out into the other meeting room. And then when I'm finished, I can close the rooms if I'm the, uh, the host, and that will bring everybody back uh, within 30 seconds to the other one. So I'm gonna uh, jump back into the main call. The last one I wanted to show you was the backgrounds. So if I go into my backgrounds, I've got the blurred background on now. I'll just tilt that up a little bit more. So I've got the blurred background. I could turn that off. You can see what my background would normally look like. You've got two levels of blur. I'll look down here. Two levels of blur. So I can have just a little bit blurred or I can have super blurred. Uh, you, can, you can choose from a whole array of, of sort of different default backgrounds, but you can now upload your own background as well. So if I'd like, I can have two Fintons. Where did he come from? Oh my God. Crazy. Um, or, oh my God, this guy's pointing at me. Um, so you can you can have a lot of fun. I've seen some uh, I've seen some hilarious versions of this. Yeah, um, you you can upload your own backgrounds. Um, it's just whatever image or picture you have yourself. I want to show you presenting. Um, I recently got uh, this feature, which is another one uh, where uh, you will now be able to present a tab from any Google document into a Google meeting. Um, so if I click on this, and it could be a document, it could be a presentation, it doesn't matter, I will automatically present this tab into the meeting. And, and you could see there that it actually showed me um, that it was, it was this specific uh, call that I was already in. So it saw that call in my calendar, and it said, this is the call that Fintan is thinking of. So when I do that, when I go into the meeting, it's just presenting that tab into the meeting. Now, something interesting to note here, um, particularly for, for uh, those of you that use Google Slides, when you present a Google Doc into the meeting, it's presenting that tab as it stands, not as a slide deck. So I still need to present that slide deck. I've got a, a weird shaped monitor, which is why that looks kind of funny. I've still got to present the slide deck, you see, in order to, to have the, the sort of presenter view. Um, so do bear that in mind that it's just presenting the tab into the actual um, call as it stands. So you see here, I don't have the, the um, I don't have it presented. Uh, and so it, 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 you, you can sort of see the notes and things like that. I, I think when, when some people saw this, they thought maybe it would like activate presentation mode in a Google slide, but it, it's actually designed to present any Google document into a meeting without having to sort of screen share. It's really, really valuable, but it's essentially doing the present a tab uh, option. That's what it's actually doing. So which you can which you can do from here, the present a tab. That's actually what it's doing. It's just activating it from here. It's a shortcut so that if you're in a Google Doc and you've got a meeting coming up, you can just present into it and you can join that meeting and away you go. Very useful for, sh for just sharing a document or a spreadsheet or a slide deck that, that you want to go through. 
So that's definitely it now. I am actually done. <laughs> um, <clears throat> hopefully you guys found this uh, update interesting. As I said, really excited to see where Google Go um, with Google Meet and continue to update and improve this product and make it a more Im Im immersive and productive experience for everybody. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if that's where you're watching this or our LinkedIn page if you're watching it on there or indeed Twitter, Instagram or Facebook if that's where you like to get your updates from. Um, and do comment if you have any feedback for us or videos you want us to cover. All of the content that we create is based on feedback from our viewers um, or from our customers and challenges and stuff that they have had. That's it for me, guys. I will see you next week.